and we seem to be making, and as a scientist, I must say this, make, we seem to be making the whole innovation development critique as the science technology passion. The first one to have been bashed should have been the neoliberal economist. I don't see that happening in any of these documents, though there is an underlying current. So it's not the debate of the social scientist versus the scientist. It's not a battle of the you know uh, all uh, altruistic social scientist versus the rogue uh, scientist. There, there are rogues in every discipline, and we need to polarize every discipline to be pro-people and anti-people, to be pro-sustainable and anti-sustainable, and uh, to be you know uh, pro-change and anti-change. If but the, the problem that I have in the intelligentsia today is that at a time when you know the credibility of experts is an all-time low and the credibility of regulators, all kinds of regulators in the world is at an all-time low, the credibility of consultants, starting with Enron and you know, uh, I mean Anderson and PricewaterCoopers and, and uh, uh, every other you know, major company which is determining the uh, policies of the world is at an all-time low, ever. I mean, uh, come to think of it, you know, uh, the uh, the membership of Greece in the in the European Union is at the mercy of the credit rating agencies. Something that Amartya Sen had written about in Hindu just a, a week ago. It's the private credit rating agencies which have no credibility, scholarly credibility whatsoever, nor have had any record of being accurate in their past predictions, are holding the future of you know the EU membership of Greece uh, to a ransom. So, I mean, this is the reality, you know, in which we are talking today. The credibility of the IMF, World Bank, and WTO is at an all-time low. The credibility of the United Nations Security Council and the G8 monopoly over it is at an all-time low. And uh, the credibility of the trickle-down theory, we've already forgotten it, right? And we have invented the new theory. Uh, in fact, I was talking to Madhi while we were driving down to uh, this uh, symposium in the morning. Uh, the new theory that has replaced the trickle down theory to us seems to be inclusive growth. Is inclusive growth just a more politically correct and more contemporary, you know, um, alternative to the previous uh, slogan of trickle down theory because the trickle down is discredited. Today we call it, uh, you know, that lip service to the common man, as it were, as, uh, uh, as uh, inclusive growth. But do we really mean it? And that has already been pointed out by couple of people. So, uh, so all these dominant cliches that have been, uh, you know, in the policy discourse, in the, you know, political economic uh, discourse, governance discourse, have been thoroughly discredited. Uh, uh, we were told that we were living in a unipolar world. For about a decade, we tried, or more, uh, two, uh, two decades, right? We have tried uh, all the dominant cliches of the unipolar world, and they have not uh, really delivered anything on the ground. The world is not a better place, uh, any better place today than it was 20 or 30 years ago. In this and situation, and the people's movements are, you know, at an all-time high, uh, starting from the new uh, Arabian Spring, as people are talking about, to our own, you know, uh, long history from Plachimada to Bosco. The uh, people are constantly challenging the authority of the state to decide about the common resources, whether it is water, land, or minerals, or whatever. And the left, right, or center, and I have absolutely no words to mince here. No government has shown the sensitivity it should have had towards people's basic, you know, uh, uh, rights, basic uh, expectations on governance. And this is a shame that you know we all have to share. Many of us, with all our sympathies to the progressive, you know, uh, 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 strand that that has been maintained in the Indian polity for so many decades, is today actually at a, a crossroad. Because uh, that's what you know. All these agitations from Plasmada to Bosco are continuously, you know, these are writings on the wall that we are refusing to see. And so, if you look at it, you know, from that yeah, perspective, yeah, yeah, from if you look at it from that perspective, the people seem to be far ahead of us. Movements seem to be far ahead of the manifestos, and the you know uh, the preparedness of the uh, people to fight for themselves seems to be far ahead of our preparedness to lead them. So that, I think, is the, is the fundamental crisis. We, I, I think, are more and more trying to reinvent ourselves and our own relevance to the you know, changing nature of the discourse. We were using different terminology 10 years ago. 
now the you know uh, the boss has changed the terms of the debate so we are now learning the new terms to keep ourselves relevant and the very fact that we are talking about this at a time when there is a national innovation council national innovation act some of us might become members in it etc etc i mean shows the low level to which you know the the whole discourse has uh, uh, has degenerated uh, and uh, we need to rise above this if we really mean what we say uh, in what we speak and what we write in all our documents and having said that i mean let me say that i i am in favor of all these manifestos no matter you know one can discuss about the um, uh, nitty gritty etc but on the face of it as long as uh, you know they they challenge the uh, authority uh, of uh, this uh, strange nexus between the expert and the government and the bureaucrat and the and the industrialist i am all for them and uh, whether they come from the radical perspective or come from the gandhian perspective or you know whatever other perspective one can you know have sectarian debates about it the need is to uh, bring them to uh, to more you know uh, uh, realistic level you see you look at the stage at which people are and you look at the stage at which we are i think we are far behind the you know the stage at which the people movements are that uh, is is more important i think we are simply reinventing you know recycling the same ideas giving them new terms and new articulations we need to uh, rise above and we we should not and this is one of my first criticisms on one of the drafts that i had attended the previous steps uh, uh, meeting in iic last year or year before last we should not shy away from calling a spade a spade we should not call uh, shy away from calling an exploiter an exploiter we should not call a shy away from calling the exploited the exploited right you know if there is a class a class struggle there is a class struggle why are we trying to make it as a ethical discourse and this and that and this you know we are see the the, uh, the enemy is more and more you know uh, so to say uh, uh, brash in the way but uh, you know the people are afraid of, of so being branded right so I think I'll I'll uh, uh, or way past your time. Thank you. So I think I'll just leave it at that. Okay. Thank you.